example, this is the the data ecos, ec, ecosystem you will be looking at. You have a governance. Um, so who can touch what data points, who can create what data points, so who can store it, who can, if there's a human intervention, who is allowed to touch the data points in the first place. Um, so the, the whole upstream is defined who can handle it, um, support how to translate this new normal to processes, uh, but also to people who's actually going to do what on that end of period adjustment, if it's very unclear who's actually governed to and, and uh, authorized to do it. But also downstream, if you go on the right side of this uh, tax monitor, uh, you will be looking at pattern recognition, statistical significance, and, uh, and outliers, outlier detection, as we've seen in, um, in very simple version on, on CPCR. So the upstream and downstream of such a data ecosystem is going to be very important. Um, a lot of companies don't have a consistent chart of accounts. And even if they have, the local finance people still try to do, to try to apply their own creative thinking about bookkeeping. That means uh, what you assume is, uh, is delivered by finance is correct. It's a, it's a very, well, I would say in 50% of the cases, minimum is a, is a miss, uh, is, is not the right assumption. Uh, uh, ultimately, in consolidation, the books look good. But you know, at that level of detail, we sometimes need that information. Um, a data manual and a data governance. I haven't seen it with corporate. So, Orlando, have you seen a data manual or a data governance beyond the chart of accounts? So, this is questions we already addressed in previous sessions. Uh, but what's the strategy on tax data at source? Um, how accurate, correct, and complete is your data? What are the policies you have? Um, is there um, a strategy for tax-specific uh, uh, data? So is, how is your book to tax differences? Um, how is that being organized? And, and what is the uh, process to ensure data quality throughout? These are questions you should, if you in a data project with clients, you should go at the client and have them explain that to you. The next one is a simple version where you have sales and purchase data, you have manufacturing data, HR and other. You, you say, I have a transactional layer, I have a finance and tax layer, and I have a legal and contractual layer. And they can feed the relevant portions of data for my tax compliance engine uh, to be converted into filings, uh, tax, tax reports and filings with tax authorities. And you have a slightly more sophisticated version, which this uh, next slide uh, 12, which is uh, being developed by, uh, typically it's how Tax Technologies Inc. runs its uh, tax series. So they can eat ERP packages from various sources, but they have convergent engines to convert it into one uniformly defined tax data file or data lake. And from that, they can at the right level of detail, as Orlando indicated, for tax purposes, they can uh, feed that information into the tax forms and subsequently file these forms with uh, the tax authorities. It means that uh, the transactional data architecture is the most critical one. If you already throw away a lot of the data on the transactional data, then um, it will be very hard for you to satisfy the tax authorities uh, and all the questions they have, whether it's for that or for corporate income tax or for transfer pricing. Um, you see HR and other here as a separate file. Obviously, it uh, ties in with uh, wages, tax, and social security as well. Some countries like uh, what Raymond uh, used to work as global head of tax of ADECO, uh, stamp agencies. The biggest uh, uh, risk on taxes is wages tax. So in their tax monitor, they would they would weight 
wages tax as the highest risk in the universe, not corporate income tax. So also that has an impact on different dashboards for different industries. 